The, the technology is just incredible, um, and you can achieve things, you can make things down to these ridiculous and small sizes using, using laser lights. So the laser light is really, really precise. In order to talk a bit more about the power of lasers, um, I wanted to explain a bit about um, one of the lasers which I brought from my lab. Um, if we can get the camera back on quickly, sorry, we're adding this bit. Uh, I brought a very important sign for us. <laughs> We've run this test past our departmental health and safety officer, who has said it's okay, it's a little bit dangerous, but it's, it's okay, we're taking the right safety precautions. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use my very high power laser, and I'm going to fire it at these balloons, and we're going to see what happens. So, but these balloons are black, the laser's quite high power, it may go pop, let's see what happens. Um, and the, the, the point about um, health and safety is actually a serious one. It's quite a high power laser. What we do is we are aiming it down on the stage. There's no way the beat is going to go towards you. I've got Edward. Do you want to come back on, Edward? And Ed, Edward the Elf is going to check that everything's okay down there. Are we good to go? So he's got some goggles on. These goggles protect our eyes. Um, so they're down there making sure no one comes on. I've got my goggles over here and the beam's not going to go anywhere near you. So I've got to make sure I've dialed it up to 100%. I've got to turn the key and I've got to get a countdown. This laser doesn't fire unless we count it down. So I've got my goggles on, so we're ready. Can we have five, four, three, three two, one? It's actually a model of the human eye. And so laser eye surgery is a fantastic way in which light can really precisely change uh, the inside of your eye. What we're going to do is, uh, we've got our eye here, we've got some clear balloons down there, and we've got some black balloons as well. And the black balloons represent something that you don't want in your eye, like a cataract or something like that, which you might, you might want to remove. So the, idea is I will try to aim with this at low power. You can see on the camera that we've got the beam running along here and coming in here and it's hitting that white blue over there. And hopefully if I turn it off for a second Dial it back up to 100%. Is everything ready over there? Over, yeah, thumbs up. I just need to put my goggles on. This is somewhat like, this is, this is a little bit like how laser eye surgery works. It's not completely like this, but we'll, we'll just see what happens when I turn the balloon on. We have a 3, 2, 1 again. 3, three 2, one. 1. Boom. So what's happening every time I do this? The laser's acting like a little pin, it's popping the balloon, it's just making a tiny hole because it's so powerful, it's just melting the, uh, the, the black balloon. But you can see that we did this inside uh, the, the model of the eye. So as I said, it doesn't quite, laser eye surgery doesn't quite work like this, it doesn't actually pop anything inside your eye. And what it does is it actually adjusts the shape of uh, the, the, the lens in your eye so that it, it modifies uh, and fixes your eyes so you can see better. So I, I uh, wear glasses, um, I know quite a few people who do wear glasses opt for laser eye surgery uh, to help correct their vision. Okay, 
Super. So I talked a bit about how powerful lasers are. We showed you this balloon popping, the lasers are quite powerful. You've seen they're quite precise because we've been able to pop a particular laser, sorry, pop a particular balloon just inside the eye whenever we wanted to. What I wanted to say though is actually the laser that I've brought, um, although it's quite powerful and it can do these amazing things like pop all these balloons or pop a balloon inside another box of an eye, uh, even from a big distance, it's not actually the most powerful laser out there. So back in 1985, those of you in the audience who remember Back to the Future, anyone from Back to the Future? Yeah. 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 Anyway, um, Back in 1985, the most powerful thing that the writers of Back to the Future could think of um, that would help the, the, the stars of the field travel through time was either a bolt of lightning or a nuclear power plant. And the laser that uh, Donald Strickland, uh, Donald Strickland and Gerald Moreau invented in exactly the same year, 1985, which has exactly the same power, 1.21 gigawatts, more or less, is, uh, it's actually, it's incredible, but it's, it's the same power level, basically. So, if you think of something that has a gigawatt of power, the only thing I can think of off the top of my head is a power station. That's a huge amount of power. It's enough power to power an entire city, a city bigger than Coventry, uh, maybe Birmingham, let's say. The laser itself, is it's not doing this continually, the laser that, 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 that Donald and Gerard invented. It's not continually on for that period, but it squeezes a huge amount of energy into a really tiny, short time. And that's, that's a fantastic thing. It lets us do lots of different things, including actually, coming back to this mock-up of an eye, it lets you do laser eye surgery in a very, very clean and precise way. Because the light, the high power is just switched on for a very short time period before switching off. So there's no risk to the rest of the eye. Um, I also use, um, more than 30 years on, the lasers have advanced a bit, and I also use these kind of um, lasers in my research. Okay, that's enough for me uh, for now. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed hearing a little bit about the power of precision and the way in which lasers can give you the presence. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone from the Warwick Physics team, from the backstage team, uh, I hope some of you made it to the pre-show demos, we had a fantastic team helping out there as well. Thanks very much for your attention. Thanks James. Um, we need to clear up your mess. So, yes, I've um, made a little bit of a mess. You have one then. Um, so I've got a few questions for you. Well, um, if you could just ignore the goings on about my name. Now, is it right? Did you did you think you told me you had a laser so powerful that it's like the one in James Bond where he's tied up and he threatened to cut his leg off? But no. <laughs> is, is that it's not this laser, no. Um, I do guess I do have a laser that is actually even more powerful than the laser in the classic. Seeing not to know where um, not which one I expect to die. I think I, I might be getting my bottle reference and things up, but forgive me. Um, yes, um, I do have a laser that's more powerful than the bottle laser. Um, it's actually more powerful than the one from um, Strickland and Moreau's invention in 1985. I didn't quite say this, I forgot, um, which I shouldn't have done. They won the Nobel Prize in Physics for their work back in 1985. Uh, they won it in 2018. And that's the highest accolade in science. This is a fantastic achievement, which they were rightly uh, awarded the prize for two years ago. Um, my laser, coming back to your question, sorry. Um, yes, um, it's 300 gigawatts, um, which is 300 times more powerful than the one that they invented. 300. So the, so the one you were talking about, one, one gigawatt, is one nuclear power station yes. of a quite hefty size. Yes. And yours in the lab, this is the reason we're all very nice to you, James. <laughs> It's 300 power stations worth of Yeah, so it's this, one, it's this one on the left, it's 300 nuclear power stations worth of, uh, of power, but it's, it's crazy when you think about it. But it's squeezed into such a short time period, it's not on the whole time, so I don't have a massive electricity bill from, yeah, for, 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 for uh, the university to pay. Yeah. And how do you power it? I have a power. It's actually um, four or five plug sockets. It's quite amazing. Really. The technology is so 
commercial. Um, it costs about a million pounds, so don't put this on your wish list. But yeah. Very good. We have very short. I don't want to wait for that. Good. As we'd all be out of the job, wouldn't we? Thank you. <laughs> we'll have a lot more hours. Thank you very much. And so, what do you do? Do you normally burst balloons in your day job? This is what you Some do. Sometimes, fire balloons. I do just go and burst balloons. No. Uh, so we use we use our quite expensive lasers to study new materials. Um, we're interested in um, how we can make power electrical power generation more efficient. So we work a bit on clean energy from sunlight, improving solar cells with next generation materials and the way we can do this is we send lights onto the material and see how it generates electricity. <coughs> we also look at uh, making really tiny molecularly, that's not really a word, uh, making wires that are wires that are thick as only a few atoms. So we can hopefully one day make small devices that are even smaller than the current <coughs> generation of uh, transistors in your, in your smartphone. Yeah, fantastic. And then in um, today's climate with energy crises, figuring out how to make solar cells even more efficient, making them work yeah. better, for the same amount of sunlight that falls on them, getting them to create more electricity than they would have done before, is one of the things that you and other laser, laser scientists like you... Myself and other laser scientists Well, that was a most illuminating talk, <laughs> James. I think we're ready for our next speakers. Um, our next are rarely allowed out of the physics lab. Um, they, uh, they've never been on stage before, and yet they're a crucial part of the physics department. And without them, we would struggle to do some of the work that we do. So, for one night only, please welcome Paul McCarroll and Alan Burton. Oh. 
then line out the back, which will propel you towards the top at the end. It's going to capture you. So, the whole starter up, so the engine grabs me, you don't move anywhere, but as soon as it blows me off, you move. And then the next bit of air grabs, yeah. Push it down back, then you grab the air, push down back, then you grab the air, push it down the back. Yeah, that's a good thing now. <laughs> so can we have a round of applause for our fabulous volunteers on stage? How are you going to get to all the back of your stage? I'm really impressed. Uh, <laughs> we can keep that out of there. We have a little bit more for you here. Um, so, we'll see this at the end. We'll give you the rest of the account. What's the name of this one? That was me. We're at the North Pole. Now we've all got an idea of what that looks like. Stick, North Pole, Santa, some elves, workshops, yeah. Here is a photograph of the North Pole. There's not much going on. Santa is nowhere to be seen. Perhaps. We've got the wrong North Pole. Instead of, Santa doesn't give it the North Pole the thing, like, but he the North Pole the moon. Now, we explain what is the MC Santa or his work on Charles. Alan, you have had an idea like a theoretical scientist. Hey! <laughs> How are we going to test it? We're going to have to go to the moon. How are we going to do that? With the plane? No, Alan, we can't do that. It's as we saw. The aircraft is air and can turn itself forward. And is there any air in space? No! No, it won't work. It just won't work. Have you got any other ideas? Yes. What about. Oh, the science. A science machine, and it's going to make bubbles. But these bubbles are special because they float. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> Yay, look! Ah, floating bubbles! I mean, they're very pretty. I think they're quite cool, but we could combine them to make a bubble ship to float us to the moon. Um, Anna. That also won't work. Why not? <laughs> because of Beyonce! <laughs> I mean, buoyancy.
and the end of the right? We're not playing that there, we're not going to this. This is loud. Are you okay with me? Are you okay with me? It will be loud. Um, it's just 
extra mass that we don't need. Um, it's just going to waste there. So, we're going to separate it. And we'll just have a little rocket, then burn this bit of fuel, shoot it out the back, and accelerate the rocket forward. And you can see um, that without this extra mass, the little rocket will accelerate much quicker. Um, just one thing to say. For every rocket launch, you need a countdown. Yes, yes, you're all going to work for this time. So, audience, five, four,
um, from WMG and from the Department of Chemistry. They're working together, as scientists often do, to talk to you about the behaviour of some different chemicals. Are we ready? Please uh, put your hands together and welcome our final talk for tonight. Evie, we are going to have a Look around, you all look like a solid, for example, ice. 